Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sharing group, y'all. Today's lesson of A Course in Miracles is lesson 86, and we are still reviewing two lessons today, everyone. The first idea for today says, only God's plan for salvation will work. Only God's plan for salvation will work. And the second lesson is holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. So two beautiful messages, y'all, two beautiful lessons for a very beautiful person. Um, I'm so pleased to introduce uh, Yvonne Sneedon. Yvonne in 2008 had a life crisis uh, which caused her to have a near-death experience. During her experience, Yvonne entered a heavenly realm and encountered Jesus and various angelic beings. And I cannot wait uh, for you all to hear her beautiful story. Uh, Yvonne, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Uh, good morning. Uh, hello, Loretta. I don't know when people will watch this video, but hello, Loretta. Uh, I'm doing great, and I hope you do too. Thank you for inviting me on this show. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm honored. Oh, yeah. I'm honored. Uh, the pleasure <laughs> is all mine. Thank you so much for accepting, because I know you're very busy. Uh, I am very excited for you to get to your experience and whatever you want to share with us uh feel free to go ahead oh thank you so much first of all i hope you're doing amazing and i hope everyone who is will be watching is doing amazing as well and um i hope uh, the purpose of me being uh, accepting this interview is to to be a gift to others a gift of encouragement a gift of hope and a gift of light uh, so, um, do you want me to start just to give my yes, background? You can start background? In the end, okay. Wherever you want to start, if you want to go before or yeah, just uh, just to give uh, a context of my uh, first ND. Uh, I'm from Europe. I'm French, uh, but from Belgium, the country next to France, and I moved to the U.S. Uh, many years ago and uh, was married to uh, an American man, and it didn't go well. I I would say it was verbally abusive and it went uh, into more, um, I felt not unsafe and my daughter as well. So after the divorce, um, I find myself alone in the US without family, without friends, without any support, having a daughter to raise a country to to get to know all the process, banking, uh, health. A care. I mean, everything was totally different. The products in the stores took me sometime an hour in the aisle to, to, to figure out which product is the good one because the names were different. <laughs> and uh, so it was really a very challenging time in my life, uh, finding myself with no support, no not knowing anyone around me. And uh, I had my faith a uh, faith back then so i connected with a, a group uh, with similar faith systems which helped me uh, connect with um with somebody who just came, came came out of her abusive relationship as well and she had bought a house so i just rented her space and that's how i was able to get away from the home uh, i was in I, I rented that space she was renting and then my life started with my daughter like that. And um, it was extremely hard. And that's why um, I developed arrhythmia, because uh, I just wanted to give the best to my daughter in this new country. Um, and so I really worked hard. Uh, fortunately, when I was in Europe, I had always had great careers. I worked in diplomacy. Uh, I was not a diplomat, but I worked in uh, a diplomatic field in consul in a consulate, uh, a royal Thai embassy, royal Thailand embassy, 
in Brussels and uh, after that worked for a lobby connected with the European Union. So I always had a, and then in the US, I um, I had found my first career was public in public diplomacy as well. So I had always been in those great career, but my uh, love start, my love life was always a disaster for some reason. <laughs> and uh, so it's, um, but when uh, I divorced, I needed to find a job which kept me home because I was raising my daughter alone as a single mother. And many people can relate to that, to being a single mother nowadays. And uh, so I did shift my career to uh, the IT world because I could work from home. Uh, and it's an amazing company, which I'm still in. And I almost think they're spiritual because they're so good to people, so kind, uh, so uplifting and celebrating pe celebrating people. Uh, it's really a great place to be when you're a spiritual person. <laughs> uh, so, but back then, uh, I wasn't there yet. So um, my first career was working, having to travel a lot, taking care of my daughter, giving her the same future as everyone else. Uh, in uh, the area, so I wanted her to to get the same chances. Uh, brought her to to classical dance in the evening, to ballet, to music, to voice. So I was working really hard to to get there to financially as well to be able to provide for her. And this uh, I developed arrhythmia, mm -hmm. and uh, and it came. You know, I each time I would just go to bed, relax that that arrhythmia my heart was starting to pound and beat uncontrollably mm -hmm. uh, and often and more often and more more severe uh, to the point that I felt I don't know if people know what it is but uh, your heart really beats so fast that you feel like you have no control even though you try to relax or to meditate and nothing the heart just gonna be uh, beating and you feel like you got, it's gonna explode and you're gonna just die so I went to the cardiologist and he confirmed that I was heading that direction. And he said, um, he said to me, what do you do for fun? And I looked at him uh, like I had, and I told him I have no time to do anything for fun. I'm raising my child in that country. I have so much pressure uh, uh, and uh, I need, I don't have time. And then he said something very unusual, very, that helps me all my life after that. He said, the heart, the physical heart is connected to the emotional heart. Mm -hmm. And he said, you need to take time to have fun. You need to take time to do joyful things in your life because that's going to be beneficial for your heart as well. I had never heard that. And uh, so I didn't listen at the time. Uh, I kept working and and he had given me some medications for uh, arrhythmia. Uh, uh, whenever I had a crisis to take the medication, it would slow down my heart and bring it back to a regular beat. And um, so I always tell my uh, that my NDE was an accidental overdose uh, because I was so panicking to have those crises because I had my daughter around and I was on my own in the country and I was afraid that if I have something happen, uh, there's a lot of anxiety around it. Mm -hmm. So what I did without realizing uh, is that when I didn't have a crisis, I took the medication, uh, mm -hmm. and which is very dangerous. Uh, it was confirmed later by uh, an anesthetist working at Duke that uh, you don't, you cannot do that. You can just die. Your heart will stop. And so, but um, I was so ang so much anxiety. And at the same time, uh, at the same time, I felt that I was tired of living. So those two things were happening at the same time. I was totally tired of living. Uh, I felt because I, I don't tell it on this pod podcast, but my, I had a, a very difficult childhood as well. And yeah. so I felt that my life uh, had just got around life and that I was just finished. And it was not a suicidal feeling at all. I was not suicidal. I just felt that the energy of my life, you know, the battery of my life mm -hmm. was coming to an end. 
and it was going to shut at any moment. Mm -hmm. I had that that deep feeling in me, and uh, I just knew a hundred percent that I was going to die. Mm. I just had that similar in the same time, uh, not connecting the two, but I knew I knew it was it. I knew just with it, I was at the end of it. Uh, like when you are at the end of an activity you didn't like to do, you love to do, and then suddenly you decide that you don't want to do that activity and want to shift to something else. Right. That's really, really how I felt that this earth activity, I was done with it. And I called my do- my, my my sister in, Fran- uh, in Belgium, uh, and I called her Mimi. And I called my sister Mimi. I said, I'm going to die. Hmm. I feel it, but I'm okay with it. Don't you worry. And of course, she was like freaking out, panicking. and said, what? No, no, don't say that. And, yeah. and I just felt it was my time. And which makes no sense because my daughter was, I was a single mother in a country where, no, you know, she would have been on her own, maybe sent to a family or something. So it didn't make sense. But somehow, supernaturally, I was given a, a peace that everything was going to be okay. And uh, I, I know I always say that, but uh, because I knew I was going to die, uh, I had bought some amazing pajamas, uh, you know, and clothes to make sure that at any moment, I was always dressed any wow. moment, I don't know, you know, any moment, uh, so if somebody found me, found me, uh, I was decent looking, you know, <laughs> just, I don't know when you, you think of silly things like that. And I was much younger, always on my physical. And so uh, that was really, and um, so one, one, the, my first NDE, so I had two, uh, the, the second, I call it the, the big one, the, the immense one, actually. Uh, but the first one is as important, uh, I would, but it's, so my first one, I, I took the medication because, as I said, I was afraid of having it. Right. And I go to bed. Uh, I said, I'm going to have a good night tonight. I'm not going to have any any arrhythmia, no, any bar, a heart, a beat, a hard, uh, you know, accelerated beat. And mm-hmm. so I just just went there and then started to read uh, my book. Uh, and um, at some point... I, at some point, I felt like when I let, put my when I started to sleep, I just put my head on the on the pillow, and then instantly I was out of my body, and I looked at my lifeless body on the bed. Mm. And at the end of the bed, at the, you know, at the end of the bed, I see those two amazing, beautiful beings of light. And uh, they they had a huge, long, white, shiny robe. Uh, they were male figures. Okay. Uh, they felt more male, not like super male, but they had a male essence. Mm. Uh, you know, they had a male essence. They had, and, and I always say that short, blondish, whitish hair, uh, very a little bit curly. And they looked totally similar, identical, mm. like they were clone, cloned. Uh, but but I knew they were two different beings. Mm. Um, they were just standing there, like, extremely calm. I would say that they were like eight or nine feet high. And they were extremely calm, extremely powerful. Uh, extremely calm and extremely powerful, divinely powerful. Mm. Uh, I did had no doubt that they were sent by the highest level of creation and creator. That's where they belong to. That's where they were from. They were from the highest level of reality where creator or God exists. Yeah. And uh, so that was that divine. And they were like um, uh, escort, military escort, that you would heavenly military escort, uh, like you see when uh, big royalties are are traveling in the streets and then you see those soldiers having that one purpose, 
just mm -hmm. just being there they don't look at anything else that's all their focus and that's how they were their whole focus was there mm -hmm. looking at me with one purpose and that purpose was to take me and they said to me telepathically Yvonne it's time to go we are leaving it's time to go like this journey on earth is over it's time to go to the next journey of you know of your existence and uh, it's time to go uh, and then I I looked at them completely at peace like yeah that's the right thing to do like that I had no recollection of my daughter being in in her room uh, I had absolutely no rec a recollection about that at all I just felt yeah this is over I'm moving. It's like you live, you're living in a in a country. I'm just gonna say Greece, and and then suddenly there's that pilot coming and say, "Okay, Ivan, we're moving to the U.S. You're coming to America," and then I say, "Okay, I'm leaving all behind, all that life, and I'm I'm going with you." That's really the feeling, and so I said, "Yes, okay, oh yeah, okay," and uh, <clears throat> it totally felt normal. And some people wonder how, but when you're in the spirit form, when you have in your real form, everything is so peaceful because they make you feel so peaceful, and everything seems normal. Mm -hmm. It's like you. It's like a continuation of the moment here. I, I didn't feel, oh, suddenly you're a totally different person, or uh, I just felt that it was still me, but in a continuing, uh, in a different, in a, uh, in a, in a continued story. Right, right. And uh, so I said, yes, okay. And the thing is that those two beings were actually behind them. Behind them uh, was uh, a spaceship. Mm. And it was like a spaceship of light. Uh, this the the um, uh, and if you have any question in the meantime, I will keep going and going. So yeah, keep going. Interrupt me, yeah. interrupt me. I have no problem about that. Keep going. And um, so behind them was a spaceship. A spaceship like it was oval. Mm -hmm. A spaceship of light. It was just like that. Spaceship of light. It was white, pearly white. And it was open. And it was like a shell that, you know, like a shell that's open. Yeah. So it was open like that. And I could see the whole oval space uh, above like that. And they were just so divine and majestic and, and uh, you know, extra cosmic type of looking being. And they said to me, it's time to go. And I said, yes. And then I shifted and I went in between them and then we just moved towards that spaceship together i was in the middle and just like it's totally normal uh we went inside the spaceship uh, i sat in the middle there were three seats i sat in the middle and each of them sat on each side yeah. and uh and then the 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 capsule or the the top closed on our, on on us and when it closed, uh, the one to my right, the being to my right, with his left hand, touches a, a handle. And when he moved that handle, uh, in one second, we crossed the entire universe. You know, like in those science fiction movies where you see, you know? Well, yeah. it's exactly that. And believe me, in those days, I was a very, very strong born again Christian. So I everything that was extraterrestrial was from the devil. <laughs> That's what we were told. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing in my mind that would ever, because people say, yeah, but maybe because you were thinking of, no, no, because there is nothing in my mind mm -hmm. that actually um, would tell me about extraterrestrial. I, I was never in my mind uh, to, to just have that experience, you see. And uh, so just like in the science fiction movie, uh, in one second, I felt, and it's really literally one second, I felt that we crossed the entire universe in that spaceship. I can still feel how it feels to be in the universe 
outside this earth you know uh, uh, uh you, you know the earth uh, the planet you have that space and i'm sorry i'm not in uh, I'm, I'm french and i forgot the the word uh, around the earth you have that space where uh, and then after that you just shift into the 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 universe the, the cosmos so i just felt how it felt to to be in that space and uh and then we arrived as we kind of landed uh and it just looked like like a planet i will just say it um now i'm usually i uh, just skip that little portion with the uh, loretta say, say it Yvonne. Come all on. we say and then we arrived in this in a in a very uh, little space but honestly we just arrived uh, it's like landing on a planet and just just like you would think and it was not but like you would think the moon Mm -hmm. uh, and it was just dark like you would be and and I didn't see much it was nighttime so I couldn't just make the uh, the environment but it didn't feel like earth like trees and it felt more like rocky and things like that but as soon as we land for some reason uh, I was immediately inside a big space of light so I don't know how the transition happened, but I don't have that memory. Uh, but I was instantly inside a space of light. Everything, everything was divinely lit. And um, there were about 20 to 20, 25 beings of light waiting for me. Um, and they were just uh, there, like waiting and excited. And they were saying, she's here, she's here, she's here, she's back. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. And in my faith, uh, I thought I always thought that we were born on earth. We didn't exist before. And we were created on earth. And then we would progress further into other journeys. Mm -hmm. But when that when that that team of people of being of light told, I heard them say, she's back. Later on, when I came back to earth, I said, okay, if I was back, it means that I existed before I was on earth, you see? And um, so they were all like super excited. I, I have to say that the two and the eight I had uh, in that other space, it was all, the vibration was the highest vibration you can have. It's much higher vibration, much higher excitement, much higher happiness. Everything is enhanced. Yeah. And um, so they were so happy to see me. They were, yeah, 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 she's here, she's here. And like a big celebration, you know, like when it's your birthday and everybody's waiting for you to arrive in the room and then there you are and everybody, yeah. Yeah. This really, really, really like it, like that it felt. And I was feeling that I was waking up from a nightmare, mm. not a dream, from a nightmare on earth. Mm. I felt like, wow, you know, like when you have a nightmare yeah. and then you wake up and then you're so relieved it was a nightmare. <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm glad it was not real. Well, that's exactly how I felt. I felt like, oh, oh my God, it wasn't real what I just experienced. Here it's real. I was waking up. It's almost like all my senses, everything was 100% alive. And uh, and I felt like Earth was, in, was so far away, many planets away, many galaxies away. It was a really, really far place. And I felt that there I was home. I, it was my real family. I do love tremendously my family on earth. Uh, I just felt that over there, these were my real family before earth. Uh, it was my clan. Yes. My, my clan, my tribe. And uh, and so I felt home. So they were celebrating me, happy, happy, happy. And uh, everything was pure light. All the objects, the the ground, the floor, uh, the the type of furniture that were there, uh, everything was made of of light. It was uh, solid light. It's like you imagine solid light. You imagine a chair, but it's solid light, divine light. It was just not a oh, light. It was a divine light. Everything was uh, irrad 
it was radiating divine light, God's light. Uh, so uh, every everything and and the beings were also they were looking like you and I, but they were made. Uh, they didn't have a color. They were made of light. It was just light, pure light coming out. You know, like a bulb of light. You see that bulb of light. Well, they were all made of light. They all had the same color, the color of, of divine light. And uh, so, but they were just beings like us with face, mouth, and and they were just rejoicing. We sat together. I still remember them surrounding me, asking to catch up what I was doing on earth and life on earth. And I was just filling them up. And it was just a reunion, like a heavenly reunion. And we were just, happy together it was my clan I was like finally home and uh you know where everybody was trying to serve me what do you need what do you need do you want this do you want that uh, they were all around me like serving me and you know the beauty and I say that all the time uh, when I'm interviewed everyone was doing that to each other mm. in that world it's the opposite of earth on earth, everyone is there about me, me and me, and again, me and my comfort and my, and I deserve it. And I am, and I'm at this and I'm, uh, so, you know, it's, it's great to celebrate ourselves on earth, but when it becomes unbalanced, then we kind of miss that beauty, the beauty of giving, uh, you know, in, in that world, everyone was a giver. Everyone was a giver. Everyone was giving to each other. Me, the other person was the most important. Yeah. Was the other. Yeah. It was making the other happy, making the other celebrate, feels felt celebrated, felt you feel uh, making the other one feeling unique, a uh, feeling amazing. Uh, and so that was just so incredible, Loretta. It was just, and then suddenly one of those beings that to me felt more like a, a senior one, the senior one or the or the more, uh, you know, uh, ancient one came to me and said, um, just took me a part of the group and then put her hands on my cheeks. With love, she just, just came like that and put her hand on my cheeks and she said, Yvonne, your experience on planet Earth is such a difficult one. You know, I grew up without parents. Uh, they parked my two sister and I in a pri all private Catholic boarding school. We had the best education you can imagine, even doing curtsy, uh, you know, all the best. But they were never there. They, they left us all our childhood while everyone else was going back on vacation at home we were never going back so I had a very difficult childhood and uh, and I was the least loved wow. child from the boarding school and that's another story um because I you know because I was I, I was parked in the boarding school when I was three years old so I had a lot of emotional issues so anyway, uh, so that I'm just sharing that portion why she was, and then after all the things and then the abuse. So she said to me, your experience on planet earth is such a difficult one. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I was like, <laughs> yes. And, um, but then she said, but you have to go back. You have to go back. And I just knew in my heart that my the my experience on that planet, that I was there kind of having to accomplish something, to finish something, mm. to learn, but to create as well. But to just, I was like on a mission of learning to myself, but also, also uh, bringing something. I knew it, I wasn't done. So uh, I said, yeah, okay, okay, I'm going back. And uh, when I said that those two beings were back and uh, they were back there and um, they, they were just waiting like uh, they did. They never communicated with me even when we came, you know, just the words, Yvonne, it's time to go. But beside that, they were quiet like soldier, just waiting 
And uh, on that way there, she, they just were waiting again. And the same way we came, they actually, um, I went back in the middle. We went back in that spaceship of light. And in one second, we went back on Earth. Yeah. And then, I, yeah, and I really, really felt my spirit reintegrate my body at that moment. Uh when a little after I said, what in the world? <laughs> you know, what in the world did you just experienced? Um yeah, I was wondering if you did you pro were you able to process that or did you think that was just a dream? No, 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 it wasn't a dream. Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing is that um when you are, you know, and, and later on the the anesthetist confirmed that my heart, uh, the medication I was taking uh, was uh, giving either sleep apnea or heart stop. And my next one was a heart stop. Mm -hmm. So I know uh, I knew it was definitely, absolutely a, a hundred times, a thousand times, not a dream. Yeah. yeah. The dream was earth. Yeah. The yeah. dream was earth. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, and, and that was I was awakened to who I really am. Yeah. Uh, everything was a hundred times livelier, and 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 no, no, it, it was definitely not. I can assure you that. Yeah, no, I know it wasn't a dream. I, you know, I was wondering if you, after the first NDE, right, um, if you process, if you were able to process what happened. You know what I'm saying? If you were able to say, wow, this is who I really am, you know? Well, you see, yeah, thank you for, it's a great, great question because I know some people think that it was a dream and then later on they realize it wasn't. So it's a very, very good question. Uh, you know, I was already, I was a, a strong believer in God already. And uh, so for me, it was, more, it was more like an honor. Wow. It was more like an honor because those, I, those angels that were, uh, for me, they were angels, the, the the beings of light that came to pick me up. So I was, I felt more like, wow, you did experience that. You know, it, it's just an honor. And um, yeah, so I just kept it to myself and went on with life, you know, because it takes time to think, oh, I didn't know what an NDE was. It was in 2008. So in those days, uh, you didn't know, uh, and the, the near-death experience was not as popular as it is now. So uh, you couldn't find online uh, near-death experience and stuff. So um, I just went on with my life and I said, wow, you, you just went. You know, because in, in, the, in the Christian environment I was, it was called the, it was more uh, the charismatic movement which was already a movement that believed in the supernatural, mm -hmm. believed in angels, believed in heaven, believed that you could be taken to heaven, mm -hmm. uh, believed in everything that's a bit supernatural. So for me, uh, I was kind of excited. I had experienced it more than anything else, you know? <laughs> uh, and uh, so eventually uh, my, my life resumed but uh, I still didn't make the connection with the medication. So I don't know when, because, you know, when you ha I had that experience, I didn't say, oh, you had an, an NDE at that date. So it took me, I don't know, it's probably two or three weeks later, probably within the month, uh, that my second NDE happened. And uh, then I was uh, in the afternoon reading my, my, the Bible at that time, reading a book, I always say, because uh, I just don't want... Uh, I wanted to be uh, my ND for everyone. And uh, and then I suddenly, I had taken the medication again, not making the the connection. I said, oh no, I just anxiety coming. Uh, don't, don't get that. So I just took the medication. And it's ridiculous because I don't know where my mind was because um, if you are not having your heart beating fast and you take a medication to just bring it back to a slow, so obviously uh, you will have something happen. And I didn't make the connection. So here's the medication again. And then I'm reading and suddenly, as I feel my organ shutting down, at the same time, I'm instantly out of my body. And I'm instantly 
in God's light. Instantly in that incredible, I feel like, I feel, I, I, I can tell you that now, I feel that I had a journey going into the light somehow in my memory, but I don't remember it, but I just have a feeling, but all I remember was to be instantly in the light. That's my, that's when my memory starts. And uh, I have, I'm just there in that divine light. And it is a majestic, heavenly, godly, uh, pure, divine light. And I'm basking in that light, just, 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 just being there. And, and I'm just feeling so joyful. You know, all my uh, physical ailments, physical illness, everything had disappeared. I had no more uh, heart problems, no more anxiety. I was just basking in that light of God and and just being happy. I felt I felt like I was at the highest level of happiness that one can ever experience in this life, in all the, the dimension, all the universes, mm. all the realities. It was the peak of happiness itself. And I was just basking in it. And the peace was there and the joy was there. I had zero awareness of anything negative or anything stressful. Just, just being there, blending with that light, and just 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 being bathing in that light of love and as i was in that light of love and it's always emotional when i share those stories that's why it always takes me a moment uh because it was really the most sacred moment of my life and um then in that light basking and joy being that pure spirit that has been removed from from all the hardship of this earthly life i'm there and then that there's that being that's coming in a distance floating floating in that light and i just can make the outlook it's a translucent being uh it has like two ends for the arms and two ends for the legs. Um, just, I always tell that because it's the easiest uh, representation, but just like flame of fire, but it's light instead. And it was just going, uh, just those legs and the arms like that. And then on top of that, it had a circular face, very circular. And it was just moving, floating and hovering, just moving, just very, very elegantly, very, uh, you know, very elegant and was just pure, beautiful, moving like that uh, towards me and above me. And I'm just looking at that being, translucing, being, which is even brighter than the light I'm in. Wow. Wow. And that's like, wow. And it's coming towards me. Then now it's above me. And it's just looking at me with, with so much joy, so much happiness, so much pride. Wow. And then, and then so much care, you know, looking at me and then kissing me all over uh, like a mother kissed their firstborn baby and kissing me even, even though I was in the spirit there, I felt that it, that being was kissing me even on my lips, you know, like a mom kissed that all over the face. Yes. Uh, that's what it was doing to me. And yeah. I felt so loved. I felt so unique. I felt just so incredibly cherished. And uh, and so when it eventually hugged me and embraced me, uh, it just instantly, instantly, God's voice told me, this is Jesus. Wow, I love it. 
this is Jesus. And I, I, I just felt that I was in, I was held by, by the highest level of tenderness, mm. of goodness, of gentleness, of affection, of uh, beauty, uh, emotional beauty. Uh, I was I was held by by my ideal parents' love mm -hmm. that I never had on earth, mm -hmm. and he was a Christ Jesus was a he and a she in one unit. I have never felt that you know it was not an androgen an androgen. It was not like a, it, it was not like oh yeah maybe an androgen because it was more like it was not a, a genderless. That's what I meant. It was not a genderless being. It was actually a being, and I've never felt that after and before. Um, it was a being that was both male and female energy in one unit, which makes sense. Yes, it was like the oneness of the our, oneness, yes. the oneness. Here we have the, like that separated into the male energy and female energy, but over there there is no separation, like you said so beautifully. It's a oneness, yeah. and I felt that oneness of the ideal parents, the ideal love, embracing me, engulfing me with that uh, he heavenly love, and I felt like I was in the parents. You know, like the, I always give that same example, but I think it's always uh, precise. It's like. Uh, it's like when you are in your parents' laps and you're four years old uh, or four or five years old and you feel like nothing can happen to you because your parents are holding you in their arms and then you feel safe and embraced, you know, like those kids that stay with their parents and look at you like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so I, I just felt that, that peace. And I felt, even though I was in Christ's arms, I felt that around me there were myriads of realities of planets of of galaxy i felt that immensity immensity of existence uh, i could feel it i could feel that it was all there you know and 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 then after he embraced me like that uh, he kind of i just just kind of in, in heaven in heaven or in the light you feel everything. You have a knowing of everything. Uh, people don't have to tell you, you know, these and that. As soon as you have a thought, you have the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a world of, it's even beyond telepathy. Mm -hmm. Telepathy is that you have a thought, you're giving me your thought and I receive it. Uh, in, he in heaven or in the light, it's a knowing. You know instantly what the person is thinking. You know instantly what they're telling you. There's no that projection into your being. You know immediately. You know instantly. So there is an instant knowing that Jesus wanted me uh, to, that I was going to go back to earth at some point. And I was like, oh, no. Uh, even though I was in this, I was like, no, no, I just feel it. I feel it. And and then I said to Jesus, well, you know, you know I was on earth and... I was divorced now and I was trying to date again and I was in the Christian uh, structure. So in that structure, you always pray to see if it's God's will. That man is your God's will for you, that other man. And if it's not God's will, you don't want to take it. And then you always pray that God brings the right man into your life, uh, the one that's his will and not yours. And... <laughs> And then you get all stressed about that and anxiety. Oh my gosh, but if it's not the right man and you like somebody, oh, but if it's not the right man, I can't, I have to ask God if it is the right man. And then you had all those anxiety about it. So I was still in a mindset and I was dating some, some men on earth, a Christian man. And um, I said to God, and I, I said to God, well, what, what do I have to do with, that man, I'm not going to give a name now. I used to give a name, but then I realized that maybe that person, some people have that name and they will feel like it's them. And I'm like, oh no. And I said, uh, what do I do? What do I have to do to that man who is on, if you send me back? Because the man, from my understanding, Yvonne, he was not nice, right? 
That's correct. Okay. That, that, that's yeah. correct. We were having, again, I was in a situation with a man who wasn't very nice. Right. And to me, and um, and I was hesitant to stay with that person uh, because when you know it's a good story, you feel it in your heart mm -hmm. and you just go with it. And I guess, like you said so rightly, I probably didn't feel right. I didn't feel right. And uh, so I asked, what do I have to do with that man? And then Jesus, sorry. Jesus, Jesus lifted in the air uh, and he become, and from that translucent being that I'm telling you, uh, he became a little bit more solid and I started to, he, he started to take a shape. He had like a robe now, but it was all light. There was nothing solid, solid. It was all made of light. So he now had a robe and he was standing there in the air and he opened a screen. So imagine we are in that light, big, and then Jesus is brighter than the light and that screen is bright too. <laughs> and I can make the, the difference. And it's also a bright light. And so he opened a screen, that screen appeared, and it's and then there was a, a square, two squares and a yes and a no, you know, like in the forms when you have to fill forms. And there was a yes and a no. And and then he actually that screen is there, and then there is written yes, no, and the square, and then it he he it ticks on the no, it tick the no. You know, you do like that V thing, it takes the no. And then he says to me, you have to say no. Mm -hmm. No to the extra relationship. It's a no. It's a no, no. It's a no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, I, and then he came, and then uh, he came back from that here that, that disappeared. And he came back. I said, well, gee, I said, why is such and such always so mean to me? With his words he's always so mean when he gets upset so when he came back he actually came in front of me but kind of a distance like that and then he took a neutral form it was very neutral mm. uh, he didn't judge anyone didn't judge that man uh but he was kind of neutral then and he just said uh it is because that man has decided to live his life on earth primarily through his mind. Mm. You have decided to live your life on earth through your heart. Uh, and he was not judging that man. He was just saying, these are two different approach of life and it's not gonna match. <laughs> It's not going to match because each time, you know, uh, he answered that because I was telling him, uh, because he was just explaining that when, if we have an ar argument or conflict, that man would just use his word to destroy me, while I would, re I would restrain from that. I would say, oh, if I say that word, it's going to hurt his feelings. So, you know, we had two different approach and we might have need somebody who is more uh, in tune with his hard emotion and freely, you know, and more in, in tune with that level, which is more me. So, um, so after that, you know, there were a question and I can tell you that here and I've told that to others, uh, there was a few questions and that one question that I ask that I love to explain to everyone is I ask Jesus, because you have to know that earth to me didn't mean anything anymore. Mm -hmm. It was a planet in a very vague galaxy, way, way far away. Mm -hmm. So it did just mean anything to me. So now I was more uh, asking questions in a detached mode, but out of curiosity. And I said to Jesus, why are people on earth racist? Mm -hmm. Because it didn't make sense to me from the perspective of the light. Uh, where we're all one and there is no separation or hates. I mean, that even that any emotion, even a doubt is a negative emotion. Uh, there's not, it does not even exist in over there. Everything was sure, certain and love. 
And so I was just curious to know why, you know, it's like somebody from another planet wondering what, why are those people on that planet doing that thing? It was exactly the same thing. I said, why are people racist on that planet, on Earth? And then Jesus said something that I would have never guessed. Uh, he said, it's because of their self-centeredness. You see, because when we grow up, I would have thought something like, uh, um, I would have thought something like, um, Maybe it was how they grew up. Or... How they grew up. Yeah, uh, yeah the, 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 the geography where they grew up, the mm -hmm. culture, maybe a trauma with another race. And when I say racist, I was saying racist in all the directions. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not only one race, but because I've traveled to all the continents except Australia. Uh, and I've seen racism in all the directions for one specific tribe, for one specific color, for one specific uh, uh, group. Uh, it's just crazy. Uh, so I had seen from all the direction, the racism in all the direction. And uh, he's, Jesus said, uh, he said, it's because of their self centeredness I would have felt trauma or like you said, how they were raised. And it was more explained to me that when you're self-centered, when you, your ego, yourself is number one in everything, you want to be surrounded with people that remind you of you. People that do things like you do, that have memories like you have, that have a culture like you have. Everything needs to be, you, you, you know, if it's something or someone that doesn't remind you of you, you just, the rejection there, you don't want to go there because it's, uh, and, and that was how it was, and it makes sense because oh, once, sense. it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm a mixed person. I have, a, I've ra I have two races, I, you know, I have almost three races in me. So I, I'm, I, you know, I have white, my dad was white, my, my mom was almost black. So I, I have that mixed in me. So I, I grew up with understanding different culture because of, uh, of all the difference, you know, black, white, Hispanic, my uh, Portuguese in me. So I have all those race in me, you see. Uh, and so I understand, I've always been open to every every difference because it's just amazing because I, I have all those differences in me. Uh, and um, uh, so I, um, uh, the, the moment, the moment you look outside yourself, mm. And want to reach the other, regardless of how they look, where they come from, what their upbringing was. The moment you do that, you get out of yourself and you grow and enrich yourself in knowing more. And, and that's the beginning, the first step to accepting difference. And the more you accept difference, the more you re you even celebrate different, you say, oh, wow, I can learn something new. I can learn something new here. It's amazing. Uh, the more you can do that, the more you grow spiritually and the more loving you become, the more you become a more loving being and, and life becomes better for you and for others because you, you, you actually get, you step into the destiny of what you're here to learn. You're here to learn love, yeah. love for others. Yeah. love uh, to just live in an environment where you learn to grow in love with all or your challenges all all your lessons i will not call it failure all that makes us grow in the dimension of love and stepping out of our comfort zone to reach the other it's amazing and people don't realize that but it feels so amazing I've seen some documentary where people were stepping out of their racial zone. And when they got together, they both received such a huge gift of love, oh. you know? And uh, and so that was uh, what I learned through that. Um, after that, uh, so a few questions, but then then we, we, we he came, Jesus, Jesus came back here and to my left and we proceeded out of the light. 
And as we proceed out of the light, you know, it's like you imagine a cloud, you're on a plane, and then uh, you are inside the cloud on the plane, but behind that there is a sun, so it's kind of shiny at the same time. So imagine that, and then suddenly you, the plane gets through the, the 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 cloud, and then now you see you see New York City or something, you know. <laughs> so, so uh, but that was about that, but in a more heavenly style and glorious style. And so, so we proceeded outside of the light. And as we proceed, I see in front of me the celestial city, the crystal city, which is probably my home city, because I was so excited. I was so happy. I was, it was just the just the highest excitement I was this is home this is home and I started to walk really fast and Jesus was next to me and was like yeah I'm going home I'm going home I'm going home you know it's like uh, so happy and um it's like uh uh and then you I, I felt like you had some people walking you know like when you walk in the street and you feel like some people are on the earth and then so I was just feeling that some people were also walking fast and I turn around and and then I see like a dozen of children angels these ones were angels the beings that i saw before didn't have were not angels but these ones were because they had wings uh, i had never seen the uh, even the beings of light that came to pick me up were just normal beings without but those those one had wings so that's why i know they were angels uh, and so there were a dozen of them and they had they were walking with white robe and circular face again and uh, silverish hair like that up to here and uh, they were just walking as fast as mad, like happy. You know, I always say that, that in our spiritual groups, everybody has to be very quiet. We cannot make a noise. We have to look spiritual. Mm -hmm. we have to, but we are uh, transcending the spiritual world. And, you know, and then if somebody makes a noise, everybody's just looking. Whether any religion, it's the same. And, uh, but in heaven, I tell you, it's like a huge party. It's uh, everything is so vibrant. Everyone, it's loud, it's happy. Yeah. Everyone is just experience. We are experiencing our emotion to the highest level. You know, we are not controlling ourselves to be con to be looked like. Okay, I have everything in control. I I'm like that person. Uh, you know, I I'm not gonna accept when if somebody say a compliment or give you something. Oh no, okay, I'm good. I'm good. You know, and. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it, you, know, uh, you know, I remember one day giving something to somebody that was really dear to me. And the person said to me, ah, oh, you want to give me that? OK. I'm like, OK. Uh, you know, it's like a thank you. Would it be nice? Yeah. And so um, so that was like it's not existing over there. It's it's joyful. Everyone is like in that big celebration. And they were just walking towards that same city. And uh, and then one of them, as they walk past me, one of them start look at me, and uh, and just look at me like it's you know, it's not a big deal. It's Yvonne who I mean, it's not not a big deal, you know. And uh, but then it looked at Jesus next to me, and when it did, his his face shone like pure light. It became light, and then the other other angels just felt that something was happening, so they turned around too, and they saw Jesus. Everyone was lit up like pure light, and they rushed into Jesus' arms, all of them, and he took them all in his arms. And because in that world everything is energy, uh, when everything is energy, so when he holds everyone, everyone can feel it individually. That he was holding them individually, just wow. then. Oh wow! So that's the beauty of the oneness, and uh, and they were just happy. And then at some point of that joyful moment, everybody Jesus, Jesus, uh, because Jesus is so loving, so kind. It's nothing to do like when the established. Uh, doctrines or some of the re religiosity says that it's a so harsh and you know there's nothing nothing about that i've seen jesus two times on earth too uh, you know and that's another story uh but never ever 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 one time seen christ uh evil or angry or uh, me, you know mean or judging so he was just there and then with filled with love he said um this is Yvonne's moment. 
uh, without rejecting them, you could feel that they felt embraced. He said, this is Yvonne's moment. Go back to your mothers. And I I just look, and then they went, and I just said, I wasn't look where, where they are going back, who are their mothers? And then when I look around, I saw a, a dozen of glorious, amazing women's angels. And I know that because they also had wings, and their wings were, were small, very small. And later on, I realized it's because they were closed. You know, we we always portrayed pictures of angels with their big, <laughs> the big, but you know, uh, so, but they were closed. And um, so uh, they went back to the, and I saw Loretta, they were gorgeous. They were like nine feet high, uh, all with long robe, different shades of colors. They all had hair up to the knees. Uh, all colors of shades, uh, glorious, filled with light. The, the face was, everything was light. Like, oh, in that world, it's, there's no color. We all have the same light color. Uh, but they were just gorgeous, amazing, and filled with the same purity as Jesus was. There's a purity in the environment, a very clear, crisp purity all over the experience. And so there were they. And they looked at me with just so much love, the same energy, the same divine energy as Christ had. And they said to me, you know, knowing knowing telepathically to make it easier on people, uh, they, said, she, they said, Yvonne, you're home. Mm. This is home. Mm. You're one of us. We will never hurt, hurt you. We will never harm you because this is home. Mm. And, and then I, I just, I said to Jesus, I, I, you know, at that point, I said to Jesus, I want to stay here. This is home. And I could feel that, I could feel it wasn't an, an option for me. It was not an option for me. And I said to Jesus, I cannot go back to that planet. It's a mean planet. It's a very violent planet. People are mean, many people are mean on that planet. You know, the beauty of being in heaven, you can say what you feel without feeling judged. Mm -hmm. You can you can say what you feel as long as it is towards good. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't. Uh, I can't relate to that planet. That planet is violent. There are many mean people. People are selfish. All they care about is themselves. Uh, I'm not saying all of them. I said many people. There are many good people as well. But many people, we have to just be honest. Mm -hmm. When you look at the world around us and the news, the barbaric uh, level of, of this world and of people's heart can be uh, all the wars, all the things you see around us and Oh, you know, all, all the, even the richness where everyone, you know, so many poor on this earth and then so many uh, crazy, crazy rich people. I mean, it's like so unbalanced. And I said, this is a world where a lot of selfishness and I can't relate to that world. I don't want to go back. I can relate to here. This is home. This is me. And uh, I want to stay here. And I could feel that Jesus... Uh, uh, there, it wasn't in the card for me to stay and I said to him uh, if you send me back I will be beyond I will be beyond exhaustion I'm not going to be able to make it there and I even tried to to, to say that my body was broken beyond repair <laughs> and that he couldn't send me back in that body beyond repair. You can send me back to that body. It's beyond repair. I tried everything, uh, but I, it was, a, I feel, so, but when I said that I was beyond exhaustion and he couldn't send me back. So in that case, he actually lifted back, lifted in the air. Jesus lifted in the air. We, we were translated in another space. Suddenly, we were no longer in the light. 
but we were in a black velvety space filled with peace. There was no, no fear in that black velvety space. It was totally fear. A totally, the fear was totally gone. It was total peace. And it was still the amazing love feeling, the amazing purity feeling. But we were translated in that, in that space. And Jesus started to expand in that space. It's like a universe without stars, imagine. Uh, so, and he expanded, and he become half a mile high. And all his being is actually becoming like, uh, like, um, uh, you know, it became like energy, large energy of light. His being became such a, like a huge hologram of light, a solid hologram of light. And, and he, came, he became, and, and his, his, like his being were field of energy, fields of energy of light. And he looked at me and I can still see his eyes on me, even though he was just, because in that world, it doesn't matter where you stand. You can feel everything as if the person was right here. Uh, and um, I, I still remember his eyes on me and him looking at me. And I'm trying to portray it. So retake the essence of it. And then he looked at me and he said, Yvonne, I will give you my strength i'll give you my power i will give you my energy of life uh, because it was what i needed to come back otherwise i had zero energy and when he said that when he said that i felt oh he'd he'd said lift your lift your hand and i lift my hand and he put his, and even though he was in a distance, don't ask me how he did it. Uh, he actually put his hand, like his finger like that. And when he did that, instantly, it was like a waterfall of energy, of life, of light, of divine. It was like a sparkling, goldish, whitish, sparkling, dry liquid sparkling like that, that were feeling, feeling my body. And uh, my feeling my, I could feel like it was feeling my spiritual body and my earthly body kind of simul simultaneously. And it was just feeling every single part of everything I am, every cell, every bone, every muscle, every nerve, every cell like proton and neutron that are kind of shh, moving like that together that's how it was doing imagine uh, millions of of proton of, of energy of light that that's actually falling tiny ones falling in you and then re-energizing every single part of your existence of your body uh to just revive you and your spiritual light uh and, and then it did that all into my body until uh it reached my um until it reached my ankle and i don't know why it stopped at that i will never know i've asked many people spiritual people why that some people say well that's what was keeping you connected with earth otherwise you know, like that go some people talk about a thread of light or some of life or something uh, some people say that otherwise if you had feel maybe you, the glory would have just taken you inside that world so yeah, I can take that. Yeah, that's possible. You know, yeah. Wow. And so when he filled me, um, he came back. And you had a question you wanted to say something or no, I'm 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 with you and I just want to give you the 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 space. I love this. <laughs> and I do not want to interrupt you. Keep, <laughs> keep going. So he filled you with this energy. Yeah, of life. <clears throat> to and then when that was complete he came back shrinked back into a, no, a, a normal size that's why you see it was all the time jesus but you see how many times he changed it uh because it christ is light it's divine light it's god's light transforming into different different being a different G, 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 the same jesus but in different forms that's the the freedom of that world and then he came back um and then he actually came next to me then he came behind me 
and then hugged me like that. Now he was really, again, very solid, but still being of light, but more solid. And then he hugged me. And then he came back in front of me and he said, Yvonne, I love everyone. I love humanity. I love all humanity. I love everything and everyone. I love, and then he said, I love my babies. And, you know, I want to emphasize on that, that Christ loves everyone, not only if we are Christian, not only if we are, I realized that, and I was part of it, that I felt that because I was saved, everyone was not, you know, that was my faith mm -hmm. and, and everyone was going to hell. But at that moment, I realized that Christ loves everyone. It is the heart. It's who you are inside. It's how much love you give to others. It's how much Christ, you know, you can follow Christ's teaching, which were teaching of selflessness, loving. Christ was here to, to teach us how to love, how God, the God, God's love and how to love, uh, how to love, like how to reconnect with the real you. <laughs> Which is a being of light, a eternal being of love and light. I just wanted to bring you to the remembrance of the fact that you're an amazing being of light. You don't have to go down into a realm of darkness, of 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 harsh wickedness. That's not. You can stay in that sphere of light, <laughs> and uh, that's how I experience it. Uh, I still believe very strongly in Christ, in God, but now I consider myself more like a a Christ follower, uh, meaning I follow his, his teaching of unconditional love for all and everyone and everything. Uh, and so, um, and then he said, I love everything. And and then when he was saying that, I was thinking, yeah, I know uh, you are Jesus. You came to earth to show us lo God's love. You came to show us compassion and conditional love. Uh, of course you love everyone. I was just thinking, because in that world, you still keep your, your, your thinking process. You're just not just suddenly another being. And, uh, and he said, I'll show you how I love. And when he said that, he actually opened up himself, took my heart. I say my heart so that people can understand. Took my heart and placed it in his heart. So I will say it in, a, uh, in another spiritual way. It took the essence of who Ivan is, the real Ivan, the real existence, the real energy of Ivan, who, who Ivan is in all the dimension, in all the worlds, in, in the eternal Ivan. And he put it into his own heart, in, in his own essence, mm. the Christ essence. And it, bl it blend me with the Christ essence. We were we blended together all as, and then we became one. We became totally one. And I and I don't want to be sacrilegious for every religious people, but I became Christ for a second mm -hmm. because He wanted me to be Christ, so that I could feel and experience and sense uh, uh, what it means to be unconditional love. Mm -hmm. and conditional love for everything everyone and everything around all the dimension everything that exists and, and at that moment and for the people that are more christian believers there's this they can go to this to john john i think it's john 7 or john 14 i don't remember which where, where jesus says to god may they be one like you and i are one and that's the oneness i it, because now i was in heaven I could experience that oneness with Christ and we were one and that's what I experienced and at that moment I experienced waves and waves and waves of kindness for and of love for everything that exists on earth to the smallest to the smallest sand uh, and everything that exists in the pl in other planets in other dimension in other realities everything was just just explosion of unconditional love and goodness and joy and the, and forgiveness, and not even forgiveness, because forgiveness implies you've done something wrong. Yes. And in that world, 
There's no, and then there's nothing wrong. It's lessons of love and you grow in love. And and that was just, I. it's a very hard moment to express how I felt in that moment because there's no words in our human conceptions, but it was the love in its all divine, celestial, eternal, uh, all existence reality. And it was just amazing. And then when he came, when when that, and then when that happened, he just came, detached her. It, we merged, and that's another, when we did that, when that experience happened, we merged together as one. Mm -hmm. We were one, we were merging together mm -hmm. as one. And that is the beauty of the ingredient in heaven. In heaven or in the light or in other dimension. I say heaven because of my background, but anyone can say whatever feel comfortable to you in God's light, in the creator's existence, in the oneness, whatever word you use. Words on earth are actually the tool for us to communicate thoughts, concepts, mm -hmm. so that we can understand each other. Mm -hmm. But before it became words, it was a concept and a thought. And so we just utilize the words, but it's the same concept. We can utilize different different words for the same concept. Yeah, yeah. And and um, so um, and the beauty of being in that world is that when you merge with, you can merge with other beings that are there, and somebody can ask you. Uh, I can ask you. Imagine you and, and me, Loretta, in the light, and then me asking Loretta. Can, can I merge with you so I can see what your life was on earth? Mm -hmm. And and then I merge with you and then I can experience everything as if I had been you. And I have the same memory of the all the single details of your experience, your pain, your joy, as if I were you. I have, I'm because I'm in, in that merging position, we are one, so I can feel everything you felt. And that's the most beautiful place to be because when we are on earth, we can share our story to somebody else. Somebody else can relate, but cannot have experienced it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to understand it fully. Yeah. Not in that world they could. So Jesus came back, we demerged, and he came back, and I knew that my time was up now. And uh, I knew that my time was ever think somebody's trying to call me. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that. I should have closed it. All right. uh, I knew that I'm just going to say that again. Uh, when we demerged, I knew that my time was up with Christ, with Jesus, and uh, that it was time for me to come back home. And I didn't resist because I knew that and Jesus kind of ret retract and say time to go, and and I knew it was I knew there was there was no trying to stay anymore. It was my time to go, and when that happened, I I felt coming down all the realities of life of existence, going from dimension to dimension, and then reintegrating this dimension, and then from the head shoop, integrating my body again, and. And I never had any arrhythmia after that. I was healed. Wow. Wow, <laughs> Yvonne. What a beautiful, beautiful experience. Yeah. Uh, I was mesmerized the entire time. Um, I don't even... You you expressed it so thoroughly. I don't even. I'm just going to tell you what I love um, about what you conveyed. First of all, thank you so much um, for it expressing to us your experiences. Um, what I love, Yvonne, one of the things, one of the points, there's so many nuggets of truth, so much wisdom uh in your experience um but i like that you touched on sometimes growing up especially in the religious community people think they have to stay in a, in a marriage or a relationship that does not serve them and i love that you um made the point that 
No, we don't have to. I, I love that Jesus gave you the permission, not that you needed it, right? But from within yourself, for you to be satisfied that Jesus gave you the permission to say, no, exit this. This does not serve you. I love that. And I just feel as people are going to be listening to this video that they're going to incorporate that to give themselves permission. You know what? This, I don't have to wait on some sign from God. If I'm not enjoying this, I don't have to stay in it. No. Uh, can I just say something? Because yes. some, something that, yeah, the message is just follow your heart. If your heart is saying you're not safe in some situation, it means you are not safe and you are allowed to go towards freedom because God only wants your happiness and wants you to live an experience on earth of joy and of self-development. It's a victory when you can get out of it and rediscover who you are. It's a false teaching to say that you have to stay in sufferance and then uh, and, and keep keep the abuse. Uh, please free yourself like I did if that's happening. Yes, Just say yes. you are so beautiful. <laughs> I'm you are so inside and out. You are so beautiful. So Yvonne, I'm gonna have you on again. I gotta have you on again. Um so I'm gonna just put that out there. We'll figure out scheduling wise, but I would love to have you on and tell us about um I know you met Jesus in person. That's juicy to me. I got to hear it. I got to hear it. Um, but I wanted to ask you, uh, to, I wanted to have you talk about your book you, you're going to have coming out soon. I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that and um, just talk about if you would like to be contacted, what's the best way to contact you? Yeah, thank you so much for doing that, Loretta. Uh, I am in the final stage of it. Uh, it should be coming in spring. Uh, so um, just stay tuned. <laughs> I, I will just mention, I'll try to reach out to you when it's on, when it's there. Uh, so if you want to, to get me back on board with you, I'll, I'll be happy. Um, it's a book that talks, touch a lot of uh, either situation of of my life but also most of my spiritual experiences be these ones but other ones as well and and also an encouragement for many people yeah i would love that that would be a perfect time so when that is published i definitely would love to have you on there's so much more conversation we can have your experiences are so rich so rich in experience and you didn't even get into your time with the embassy the you know the depth and the breadth of your childhood and we don't have to go through all that but you come with so much fullness um and i'm just so glad to to have had you on do you have any um if people would like to contact you uh, what would be the best uh, way for them to contact you if you're open to it? Uh, yeah. Would you like to share that? Yeah, I have uh, just my personal website called liveheaven-now. So liveheaven in one word, dash now.com. Uh, so you can go there. It's uh, You will find a summary of my NDE some encouraging words, also uh, a page which which introduced the documentary that I did, uh, which is on uh, Amazon called uh, Back from the Light, which I co-produced with, Mar with Robert Neil Marshall. We co-produced together this, um, it's called Back from the Light, and it actually addressed all the after effects of having a near-death experience, what happened when you're on earth after such an experience. So we went to interview uh, in the US and in Europe, different near-death experiencers and how they live their life today, what are the after effects and how is their experience now? And we also interviewed families and children and friends 
to see how what's the transformation they observed. It's an it's a very loving, uh, very loving documentary. We did it with our own little means. So if you go um, on uh, uh, and if you watch the documentary, I would be just so thankful if you could like it or put put a positive comment mm -hmm. so we can. We can. I'm not making any money out of that uh, documentary because I invested a lot of financial myself, uh, and it's it's just to help people that had a near-death experience and also people that are looking to understand what a near-death experience is. So I appreciate that. So they can find that. That is first of all, congratulations on that. That's wonderful. So they can find that when they go to your website, Yvonne. Can find it there when they go to my website, or also uh, if they go on on Amazon, on Amazon they can just put uh, back from the light, and, and then they can watch that. We I know that some people outside some countries might not be able to watch it. I think it's in the U.S., uh, in the U.K., in some of Canada, but I know that uh, we are also on Vimeo. And I think Vimeo is more international. So if you want to really watch it and you're in another country, try Vimeo as well. Thank you. That is so beautiful. Yes, I cannot wait to watch that. And everybody, keep your eyes and ears open for Yvonne's autobiography. I'm so excited to, um, to read that once it's published. Would you like to share some lasting words of wisdom before we close out, Yvonne? Uh, thank you for giving me that this opportunity. Uh, what I would like to say is every one of us here watching, remember, you're not just this body here on earth going through these struggles. Uh, you were existing before already into an, an incredible being of light. Uh, remember that each day that pass here, life has its struggle. But you are more than victorious because you are a celestial being. You can overcome any challenge. Uh, your time is coming. Your time of happiness and joy. As you did, as you as you dive deeper in what the afterlife brings, it will bring you hope as well that that you are celebrated if you are not where you are. And remember, joy is in you. Success is in you. Uh, kindness love everything is in you love yourself and love yourself and lo love others be a giver and receive as well thank you so beautiful so so beautiful so beautiful thank you so much for that um thank you so much for that so Yvonne um again I'm gonna have you back on again <laughs> I'm going to read you your closing remarks. You've been so generous with your time with us. Yvonne, I just had the pleasure of having Robert Schwartz join me on the show. And one of the things he spoke about is the level of courage it takes for us to incarnate on planet Earth. He said that when we transition on the other side and travel throughout the galaxies, other beings are thoroughly impressed with the fact that we have lived lives on this planet. Because as we all know, uh, the schoolhouse of Earth is can be so tough. And you have indeed also experience the challenges and hard knocks that this dimension offers and therefore Yvonne are courageous as you have gracefully persevered out of the fire standing strong wearing a crown of wisdom and love and one of your many gifts that you offer, Yvonne, upon returning to this side of the veil is your powerfully healing description of home. When you talk about your journey of the other side, your words spark in the collective 
the faint memory of where we all come from as you beautifully describe home it is like a salve of healing for us all to hear we absorb your story like an ointment of love gently treating our wounds activating our soul level memories of that which we are. And it is not only the words you speak, Yvonne, but also the very vibration of which you speak them that holds this incredible healing power. This wonderful energy of love can be found within the tone of your voice and the purity of your heart as it seeps inside of the very cells of our bodies and is absorbed into our consciousness. And this, Yvonne, is a beautiful addition to the many gifts that you carry while you are here on this earth plane. Add this to your resume of abilities your story, your experience, your vibration holds keys to remind us of our home. And this is of incredible significance uh, as this is why we are here. <laughs> we are here to simply remember that which we are. So thank you very much for agreeing to come back here after your NDE, uh, to share with us your love, your light. Um, and thank you so much for joining the show with us today. It has been, it's been immeasurably more than what I even thought it would be. It's been a, a complete pleasure having you in. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. you. You are such a light yourself. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm so happy we did it together. Because we both shared our light energy in that beautify way spiritually. And uh, it's an honor for me to, to, to share that with you. Yeah. Yes, you have taken me to church, Yvonne, in a good way. You've taken me to church. Um, I feel so full. My heart is so full. Yvonne, we end with a heart. I'm trying to. There do you go. I love it. Oh, oh, I love it. Your your laptop is is uh, giving up heart. Uh, heart. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I don't know how it. That's you. That's you. You hold the magic. That's the first time that's actually happened. It happens so much. It was. I love it. God, it's light. <laughs> well, um, thank you everyone for hanging in there and listening to Yvonne's beautiful experiences. Thank you. Um, I welcome your comments. Please like and subscribe, forward this video to others who will benefit from it. Yvonne and I were talking before we got started that, you know, the near-death experience, hearing the experiences heals people. And it most certainly did uh, for me and my journey. And so if you feel like there's someone that could benefit from these stories, please forward them. Um, they are divine experiences. They are divine experience. So we love you all, right, Yvonne? We love you all. Yes, yes. Everyone, we love yes. you. Uh, we can express that freely. Yes. And, and like Loretta was saying, you're so courageous to be on earth. You're a hero, a, earthly, a, a spiritual hero. Yes. Remember that every day of your life. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Yes. Everything you said. Everything you said. <laughs> so I love y'all. We love you. Have a great, great, great week. And until next time, see you later. Bye-bye.